So I want to make a quick video about passing the AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam. I made a previous video about how I failed the exam. So this is the video following that to kind of explain how I eventually passed the exam on my second attempt about two or three weeks later with just a couple more study tips. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing you want to do is to choose a good course that best fits your study goals. I think for the exam, there are various study goals you may have. One could be just to pass the exam. The other one could be actually like learning how to be a good AWS Solutions Architect. I wanted more so to learn how to be a good AWS Solutions Architect, like learn how to actually build solutions in the cloud. So I decided to go for Adrian Contril's AWS course. This is a great course on AWS solutions architecture, essentially helping you understand like how things are built in AWS. Now, this course is very long, very in-depth, very deep. It took me about three or so months to go through it uh, for various reasons. I actually have a Notion tracker that I used to plan out my studying and also outline every single portion of the course that I did um, and how long it took me. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. I'll probably even show it on the screen so you can kind of see like, you know, how long it took me to do each section and the timeline for that. I definitely had a couple of days where I didn't get to study. I had a couple of days where studying took longer than I expected because of work or other commitments. But essentially this tracker just kind of helped me stay on track with regards to like going through the course because it's very long. It's about almost seven hours of content between technical content demos and just general like explanations of the resources and the services so it's very very deep if you really want to learn how to architect on AWS definitely go for controls course really really good I can't recommend it enough now I'll tell you that because controls course is pretty long it could get really uninteresting really quickly that's just the truth it's a very long course lots of demos a lot of practical stuff it could get really uninteresting really quick so you need to stay motivated throughout it throughout the course and I'm gonna tell you how you can stay motivated throughout the course Course. All right, so I kind of lied. I already told you how you can stay motivated throughout the course. Essentially, give yourself a time frame, have a study schedule, and just go with that schedule. Like, I use Notion to plan my stuff. I already made a video about how to use Notion to like build boards and plan your stuff. I'll leave a link to it in the description and also somewhere on the screen, but just plan your stuff, be consistent, try to show up as much as you can, and track it. And that's the only way to be consistent. Like, if you see that you're lacking on your goals, kind of push you to be consistent. So, and have an end goal in mind, like, have like a cut up date. It really helps with consistency. Another thing I'll say with control course is to do all the labs. The labs are super, super great, really in-depth. You guys to build out projects. You could even add them as portfolio projects for yourself. You can spin them, be whatever you want them to be. Just kind of make them like your own. Really, really cool projects. Like you really get to touch every single service in AWS. Everything from RDS to DynamoDB to Route 53, S3, you know, all the AWS services, you get to touch all of them. So if you can, just play around with them. It's very helpful. It actually helps you kind of understand how the services work and, you know, just get familiar with them. So definitely try to play around with each of those services. Do the labs. Controls labs are like really in-depth, so you can do them. You can turn them into portfolio projects and yeah, they'll be very helpful for you. So the other piece that'll be helpful for passing this exam is practice exams. I personally use Tutorial Dojo's practice exams that they have on Udemy. I originally tried to use their app um, or their website. I paid for it, but it, it wasn't a good experience. Like it, it was bad. And Tutorial Dojo, if you're watching this, this is not trying to like support your business or like, I don't know, like, I'm not trying to speak ill. I think you have amazing tutorials, but your platform, your site, you need to work on that. You need to fix that. Like, And so when I finish my practice exam, it doesn't save my session. It doesn't save what I've done. And now I have to start all over again. That is very demoralizing. I had that happen to me multiple times and like that just threw me off like that was i don't want to blame that for failing the exams so i'm not but that definitely like demotivated me when i had so much momentum with like practicing uh, with like my studying and i didn't study for quite a while after that so please tutorial to joe if you're watching this please fix your stuff like you have amazing practice exams you have the right idea for like drilling questions with like services or like time based or whatever so you're doing a great job but fix your platform like don't like you you can be talking about cloud and stuff like that and not have like a backend platform that knows how to save user state when they take practice exams. That's just not good. So anyways, though, I still ended up using the Tutorial Dojo practice exam on Udemy. Unknown to me, I'd already bought their practice exams like a few years ago when I thought I was going to take the exam, the social architect exam, but I never took it. But I had a practice exam, so I still use it on Udemy. My first attempt, I only took one or two practice exams. I don't remember. And that was not enough to like kind of like, you know, drill and practice what I needed to know. So I didn't do very well in my first attempt. I got a six. I was 21 points short of passing. So I think 699. And then, yeah, that goes to show that actually practicing exams, you know, actually helps drill with, you know, finding out your gaps in knowledge and, you know, helping you kind of orient yourself around what to expect in the exam. So 
do your practice exams. And I still recommend Tutorial Dojo, but not their platform. I recommend their Udemy. Just be their Udemy until they fix their platform. So yeah, Tutorial Dojo, if you're watching this, please fix your platform. It would be very helpful. All right, the final step of the journey for me was doing a couple more practice exams. I think I just did two more and I passed my second attempt with a score of 823 out of 1000, which is a massive improvement from 699. So I still use Tutorial Dojo's practice exams, again, on Udemy, so they're great, but they need to fix their platform. And yeah, essentially felt pretty confident when I was taking it and, you know, eventually passed. So this is advice for those who want to actually learn how to like really go deep on AWS. So like I said, do the labs, you know, I already have my own AWS account. I've been using that for several years now i have so much stuff in there um, i have all my domains in there like running you know all that stuff like i use it like i'm you know personally like i i have products i do on it and i'm you know constantly like you know just learning on my own personal platform my own personal aws account so i recommend getting one you know practicing on it building out stuff learning how things work in there it's very helpful now if you want to just kind of learn to pass the exam i'll recommend stefan merrick or neil davis's udemy courses i use them to pass the aws cloud practitioner exam a few years ago and i made a video about that so if you want to check out that video i'll leave it on the screen probably on the right or on the left and yeah that's it for this video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye